We have now everything ready for the next step. So let's create our very first Vue.js project. Therefore, we just uh, type view and then create. And then we just give it a name. For example, our first project like hello underscore world. And uh, then there are some processes running and I will just explain what is the CLI doing right now. Because we have a selection here. We have a preset Vue.js 2 or 3. What do we want to have? Right now we shouldn't do manually select features because uh, we just use the preset, but some words are important right now. CLI, we already cleared that. That's the command line interface and um, view preset means there are some features um, view CLI is just setting up for you. For example, bubble and bubble is a transpiler. That means that uh, bubble is turning JavaScript in uh, some kind of another type of JavaScript. Let's imagine you have the so-called browser Internet Explorer. Uh, there may be someone out there just using it in 2022 or 23. But let's imagine this guy wants to open our Vue.js 3 app. Then uh, there are some problems. And therefore, Bubble can be used to just make the JavaScript code the modern JavaScript code and turn it into old and vanilla JavaScript code, for example. Or there's the ECMA script, or maybe you have heard for, uh, have heard of ES6 or something like that. And ECMA script is a set of rules how JavaScript should be written. And ES or ECMA script um, is coming in different versions. Let's let's just Google um, ECMA script six, for example, and then we have can I use uh, so compatibility? There we have it. And then we can I use there we see what where ECMAScript 6 can be used and it's called 2015 because that is the release date of ES6. Um, you may have heard of JavaScript 6 as well. There are some guys out there and calling ES6 ECMAScript 2015 uh, even to, uh, JavaScript 6. But let's see it. Uh, we have the Internet Explorer that is uh, isn't uh, un, um, supported at all, and we have Edge, Chrome, Safari, and all the other things. And there we see um, where the modern standard should be. And if you have a client or if you have a project that should run on a special type of browser or your client uh, requires to run it on a different uh, kind of browser, then you should stick to ECMAScript 6 or 5 even. But we have, um, for, for this job, we have Bubble. And Bubble is doing it like a transpiler. So it is translating JavaScript like TypeScript is doing as well. TypeScript is another transpiler and TypeScript is, um, yeah, you, you have to use TypeScript when you want to develop a software and be type safe. So if there is a Boolean or if there's a string or integer or something else, then it should be consistent in your complete in the whole application. And JavaScript isn't. And TypeScript makes your developing feelings like um, you uh, you can use types, but it's also like Bubble transpiling the TypeScript then to even to real JavaScript. And yeah, ESLint is a tool that is telling you if your code style is right. So for example, if you just want to use uh, double quotes or single quotes, then you just th then there's a rule for it. And ESLint is checking your source code, your whole code, um, if you are uh, violating any rule. And then there is an error if you just uh, fucked up one rule. But ESLint, you have it. And Bubble, we have it. And Vue.js 3. So let's hit enter and go to the next step. And we see creating project in. We have the CLI plugins and blah, blah, blah. If you're using Git, then there it says initializing Git repository. It's a local repository. And what we have here is NPM doing its work. So we see uh, CLI plugins. And in the next videos, um, we will just install some plugins and in, on YouTube or in your project. You may install some plugins. It's a difference between plugins and packages. If you're installing plugins um, or, or, or um, view CLI plugins, then you, you are installing NPM packages with additional source code. So plugins, um, plugins bring 
source code into your project. For example, the view router. Maybe you want to have it in your project later on. And if you are installing the view router plugin, then you have the hello world welcome example adapted. If you just install the NBM package, so not the plugin, you're installing the package, then you just have the dependency and you have to install it by yourself. I recommend you, if you have a running project, never install a plugin before you haven't checked what it's doing. Um, but yeah, that's that's maybe a thing you should always do on, on, the, on the internet, on, on the web. But when it's ready, you see that the project has been um, created and then we just uh, have to change the directory and go into our project name. Uh, so you see our project name has... Um, has been created in a, a folder that's the same like our project name. Uh, so we head into it, hello world, change directory, and then we can run npm surf. But at first we uh, open the project in Visual Studio Code. Therefore we can just hit code and then a dot. So you see trust the author and then we have our folder structure and there is everything we need. So we have the package JSON and this is the very first file that's really important because it's the npm, uh, it's the, the, the most important file for npm. Because the package JSON is uh, part of the node package, obviously, manager. And this, it has some regions. So at first you see the name of the package. Here we are, and then the version of your package. This is depending on your project. If you are running a dependency manager or CICD pipeline or something, you may change, uh, may want to change the version, um, but you do not have to. Then we have the scripts section. And this is important because scripts is, uh, um, yeah, it's it's kind of an alias. It's kind of an abbreviation of your real commands. So you could do something like hello and print out echo world. And if you if you just run npm run hello, then it would just echo out world. So this is like an alias. This is important that you do not have to remember view minus cli minus service minus uh, start, for example, if you just hit as it's recommended, npm run surf. So <clears throat> npm is running scripts for you. And the underlying script of surf is view CLI service and surf. Then there are dependencies on our project. We have core JavaScript, obviously we need it, and we have Vue.js in the, at least the version three, and then there's anything else. Um, we also have dependencies with dev put in front of so dev dependencies and uh, you have already heard of global npm packages so like the view cli it is available in every folder so if i just run in another directory i can type view and then you see the view cli so view minus v and then you see the version this is a global package that can be run in every directory from our command line then we have the local packages like core.js and view, and we have the dev dependencies. So the, those dependencies are just installed on your local computer, on, on your development environment. Because the ESLint, for example, you have heard of it. ESLint is just the rule plugin that checks if you are doing the coding style guides and if you do not break any rules. And ESLint is the best is, is best working on your development environment. Uh, it has nothing to do in your production environment because when the code uh, is on your server, then it's probably the, the yeah, it's it's the worst place to check if the coding style guide is right. Okay, so this is dependencies and this is dev dependencies and this is ESLint and ESLint have some configuration as well. So you see here uh, we have uh, some plugins. We have Vue.js rules and the Vue essential rules. Um, I just can Google it and then we see rules we have here ESLint.Vue.js.org and we see there's a rule set that is recommended and it's divided into uh, three parts. For example here the essential rules. Uh, this is really important for you to help coding 
So for example, no mutating props. This is a rule, we will come to that later when we come to Vue.js properties. This isn't allowed, it's, it's not allowed to mutate properties. And this rule is uh, telling us. So we see here, it's an unexpected mutation of a property. Here we say property value, and this property is being mutated. So test is being set on it, and this isn't allowed. So we see that this rule is important and it, it blocks us doing such a thing. Why are those essential? Because there are rules of Vue.js that you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't break. And then we have essentials for Vue.js 3, because this is applicable to Vue.js 2 as well. Then we have Vue.js 3 rules, they are pretty new. And we have two rules, they may have run deprecated. Then we see strongly recommended, but not required. So if you, for example, do it um, with here a, a minus, or if, you, if you're using another case, well, uh, that is up to you, but it's recommended to use it like this. And then we have uh, strongly recommended and uncategorized. So you, you see there are pretty, pretty much other rules that you can um, have in your project. But you can disable the rules. If you have, for example, the view, um, the view rule, what was it called, like attribute hyphenation. If we have this rule and we want just to have it off, then we just type it like this. But this is important if you um, want to disable it for your whole project. Uh, but for, for most projects, those two are really, really fine. The browser list is something, yeah, Bubble is, uh, is aware of. And this is the package JSON file. Then there's the package log file and the package log file is more or less the same here, but you, you think it's the same, but it isn't. It has a hash value here, for example, and this hash value checks if there has been a modification of the files in node modules and then the respective uh, project here or package. Why is this list so unbelievable long? Because the node modules folder is unbelievable big. We see here our two, or it's a little bit more, we see our dependencies, and this here is our dependency tree. So those packages has been installed by just installing those dependencies, and we see it. If we just scroll down, then we see view. Ah, da, 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 da. Here we have view, and we also see core.js. When we just scroll up, we see core.js. Here it is, and we see those here just demonstrated we see here the other bubble uh where is it ah here is this bubble why are the other dependencies here if we just head over to bubble then we see oh that's it's really a lot and uh, maybe there's core here there's core and core has also a package json and also other dependencies like cold frame generator and all that stuff and you see it like here so if you use node package manager it is aware of other dependencies as well so this here depends on other dependencies and npm is managing all the dependencies and the versions as well because bubble core needs other versions than maybe a bubble eslint parser and all the conflicts if those can manage together work together uh, this is done by package manager one last thing about the node modules folder. Never, never, never check it in your Git repository. Never do it because it's really, really big. And the package log file um, is your manager. If every file is really, really um, downloaded correctly here and its integrity, in, integrity is fine as well. What else should you do? Uh, shouldn't you do? You sh you never should modify anything here in this folder because if you do it and you run npm install, then everything is reset again because it's uh, managed by the hash value here. But we have everything else. The source folder we have here um, the app dot view and the main JS, but we will just run npm run serve as we should do. So npm run serve and then let's see if everything is working if we have our app content displayed in our browser so we should see welcome to our your Vue.js app 
And uh, while it's starting, um, I would just open the browser and then run localhost. And then which part is it? We will see it. If you are behind a proxy that may not work, then you should configure it that the uh, node package, uh, the, the view server um, can be reached. So there we see it, 8080. Okay. And then we see, hello world, welcome to your Vue.js app. That's the first thing we should see right now and then everything is fine. This is the content of app.view. So we see here, hello world message and we see a logo. That's everything all right in our browser as well. And there's even more, but we come to that later. Another important thing is the main.js file. And you may have recommended that it's not, not really big. We see import create app from view and the create app function we see here is um, responsible for creating our application. And afterwards, we are mounting it in the div ID app container. And if we just hit the uh, right mouse button and see page source, then we see that there's a div ID app container and there is where all the magic is happening. So if we just had not page source, so we have to, to hit inspect. Then we see that there is a little bit more source code than just our div ID app container. And this is the magic of Vue.js and any other front end framework as well. It is manipulating our DOM, our document object model. And you see the difference. This is just source code. And this is the document object model. And the document object model is a tree with some nodes, like here the body node, here the div node, here another div node, here it's a paragraph node. And this is what our browser is interpreting and displaying on the front end. And Vue.js is just manipulating the front end and doing its work here in front in, in this element. So words you should keep in mind is this is an element. This is the source code. And here we have elements. And elements are in our document object model in our DOM. And in our DOM, there's all the manipulation because we have here and we just ah, change here. const app is create app. And then we do app.mount. Uh, this change is just a small change, but it allows us here to do some magic and to import things and to use another component to install plugins and all the things. And now we are ready to head into the next video of Vue.js. If you have any questions, leave a comment behind. And if you think yeah, this is a great tutorial, then hit the subscribe button and we see us again in the next video.